Well, hey there, everybody. This is the Wired to Crush It show. I'm your host, Tanya Eliza, and this is the place where we talk all about business, marketing, and money strategies so that you can have a wildly successful lifestyle. Today, I'm really excited because I got the pleasure of interviewing a really great online family member of mine. We've known each other virtually for a while, and her name is Jenny Potter. So one day, Jenny woke up and she was like, I want to create an online business. Her background was in psychology and she did counseling and helped people in that arena. And ever since she was a little girl, she said that she enjoyed writing and she always had a dream of becoming an author. So she decided to write a book and she published a book and then she started to do online virtual coaching. Like a lot of people these days, taking their brick and mortar business into the virtual world. And so she created a one-on-one coaching program. Now, as she was creating a one-on-one coaching program and having her coaching clients come to her, she realized that her time was really limited and decided to take a lot of her knowledge and expertise and package it up into a digital course and create a framework for her clients to go through where she didn't have to physically be present with them one-on-one, but they could technically have the same experience, if not better, going through a self program in a sense of a digital course. Not to mention, she could also charge a lot more than just what she was charging with her book, right? If you think about it, a book sale is about $20 or less, but a digital course is about three, four, 500 or more. And when people pay, they actually pay attention. So this is actually doing your market a better service in giving them your time without having to charge necessarily your one-on-one rate, but them having that same experience or if not better. Talk about how Jenny was able to put this idea together, how she was able to launch it and some of the success that she's already been able to have with it. My goal with this episode today is to put this together in a way where you can learn from Jenny's experience because I wanted to give a different perspective to you if you are thinking if you ever wanted to create a digital course or have a program that you sell and create an online business essentially where you get to keep a hundred percent of the profits. This is something that I'm extremely passionate talking about. And a lot of my online family members ask me, Tanya, when are you going to teach people how to create digital courses? It's something that we know that you do, that you've had a lot of success with. And yes, it's life changing. Now I don't have to go and create a digital course on how to create a digital course because my good friend and online mentor, Amy Porterfield, has already done this for us. And right now, Digital Course Academy, which is her complete program on how to create, market, and sell your own digital course and program is going to be coming open for enrollment for 2023. But we're publishing this episode right as Digital Course Academy is opening for enrollment. So we'll leave a link in the show notes below, or you can go to tanyaeliza.com forward slash DCA to get all of the details about Digital Course Academy. Time is limited, so make sure that you take action ASAP. You'll also see on that page that we put together a very exclusive bonus that you can only get when you purchase Digital Course Academy and enroll through our link in the show notes. This is going to be a exclusive invitation to a live in-person two-day workshop with me where I get to help you with your digital course, all of the marketing material, and get to work on a marketing plan for you with your digital course. So this is an extra added value that we're adding to the program within our promotion of DCA this year. I hope you find extreme value and you dive in with us. All right, wherever you're viewing in or listening, make sure to get subscribed to the show because we put out brand new resources and training episodes for you each and every week. Let's dive in to the interview with Jenny Potter. Hey, Jenny, welcome to the show. It is so great to have you. Thank you so much for having me on here, Tanya. This is amazing. Oh, okay. So your time's valuable. I'm going to just dive right into it. So as I talked about in the intro from my perspective of you, and we've been like online family members, right? We've known each other virtually. So to get this interview in place is really exciting for me because we get to talk about your digital course journey and where this 
this all started. And I know that you're an author, you're a coach, and you're also a course creator. And then you probably also have some other cool things behind you too, besides <laughs> just that. So for people that don't know who you are, can you let us know how this all got started for you? How did you create an online business? How did you create your digital course? Like, where did this idea even stem from? Okay, yeah. So I don't know where to start because I could start 10 years ago or I could start two years ago. But essentially, I was building a business online with network marketing. That's kind of where I got my my feet wet in, in building a business online. And uh, that slowly turned into a coaching business. My background pre-network marketing is counseling, coaching, that kind of stuff. And so I shifted into coaching. Uh, and then I wrote a book. And then it was about a month before an event I was speaking at. And I had this sort of God moment, this moment where, you know, you have these little moments and it was like this little nudge, um, create a course. Because I've been having people kind of reach out to me, uh, wanting to know more, like wanting to see more, more video around what I was talking about in my book. And so I had this sort of idea that I would uh, create a course and I had no experience with that. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't take a course to do a course. <laughs> I just went home knowing like, shoot, I've got to create a course. And ideally, I wanted to create it before I went and spoke on stage because I wanted to share with the audience that I that I had a course to sell. So that's so kind of like the beginning. Yeah. Okay. I love this. So this was a little bit, this would be a little bit different for me because I haven't yet written a book. I don't know if I ever will. People ask me all the time, when are you going to write a book? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like maybe I could probably just sit down and write a pamphlet. Like, can I just write you a pamphlet? <laughs> Does it have to be a full book? And then I became a course creator totally by like fluke. Like it wasn't, I never went to school and said, I'm going to grow up and be a digital course creator or a mm -hmm. marketing coach and trainer. So you had already written a book and then you were already doing coaching. And I hear a lot of the time from coaches that the attraction for coaches to create a digital course is just a leverage of time, right? And being able to have the same impact with your knowledge and expertise, but be instead of it be one on one, you could go one to many and help more people because your time is very limited. So would you say that that was your journey in a nutshell? <laughs> well, it would have been good if I'd had that intention in the beginning. That's what ended up happening. It was beautiful. I realized that I could sell one course or a hundred books profit wise. So that was kind of like, whoa, <laughs> you know, so that, that was different there. But also, of course, time wise, it was a tool that I could share with my clients that they could use to um, grow and learn. Because the work that I do, Tanya, I, ideally, I want everyone to walk away being able to do their own work and heal themselves after they've worked with me. And so I wanted something that was affordable um, and, uh, that people could step into watch at their own pace and, uh, you know, just help change lives at, at a, you know, a cool, in a cool way, in a simple way. And so the course was actually based on my book. Like I kind of, that's how I, that's how I figured out the framework of it was I based it off the chapters and just kind of did a video version of the book almost. Yeah. How did you know that you wanted to be even an author or a coach? Where did that ever come from? So I've been writing since I was little. I think I probably always wanted to be an author. Like, so this last, I think it's been, it'll be a year soon that I launched my book. Uh, and um, I just, I mean, I don't know if you know Ray Higdon. I, I think you know Ray. Uh, and so Ray had said to me, cause I'd been doing where I'd been working closely with him one-on-one -on -one, and he just messaged me one day and said, Hey, had a dream time to write your book. And so I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> and so that was kind of how it started. I had been working with Ray kind of as a guinea pig with my techniques. And then he had been mentoring me already. So it was just one of those uh, cool relationships. So he told me to do it. So I sat down and did it. And uh, it was, uh, I mean, really life, a life goal for sure achieved. Yeah. Well, that is a huge accomplishment. So congratulations on Thank that. You. That's big time. Thank that is you. no easy feat. Like I've sat down and I've thought about, okay, do I write a book? And I'm like, oh my gosh, where would I, where would I fit this in? So I, I'm very, um, 
proud of you for that. That's a huge feat. I can absolutely <laughs> contest that. So I'm curious, before writing a book and becoming an author, what did you do and and how did that transpire? Like, how did you even come up with the idea of the book? Right. So my background is in counseling. I had a counseling practice before I found network marketing. And then I found it all a little heavy. And I preferred network marketing. Uh, although that was a whole outside of the comfort zone thing for me too. I had a lot of anxiety, didn't like uh, all the things you're supposed to like with network marketing. I was very shy. I didn't, you know, I would like throw up in the parking lot before the networking meeting kind of uh, thing. I had a lot of anxiety, which is what I help people with. Like that's what my book is all about is releasing those extra emotions that we kind of feel like we can't deal with or hold us back. And so um, that was kind of the beginning of the journey was leaving my counseling practice um, and, and my social work and shifting into sales. Uh, and, and really learning how to step out of my comfort zone, talk to strangers, be online live, all that kind of stuff. And so that was kind of, that's kind of the journey. And then I shifted as I became a team leader and uh, stepped into leadership and uh, realized that I was training and coaching and doing all that stuff, doing webinars, all that stuff pretty regularly. And it was a natural fit. So then I started coaching cool. and, uh, and then kind of almost went back to my counseling route, you know, sort of full circle, uh, shifted from network marketing to focus full time on, on, uh, coaching, but not coaching just network marketers, coaching anyone, uh, any business entrepreneurs, uh, really is my kind of main niche and working with people to just help them release their emotion in a really simple way. Uh, and, uh, and so that was, I became obsessed with why people get in their own way. So, um, you know, if you, if you sign someone new in your network marketing team and they like, they're like, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to be a millionaire. This is amazing. We're going to make so much money together. And then they never talk to you again, or they say they're going to phone three people and they never do. And, uh, or just simple stuff. Like when people want to lose weight and they make the goal to eat better or go for a walk, but they never do it. Like, what is that in us that stops us from doing the thing that we want to do? And so I kind of got obsessed around that topic and then found a couple of cool techniques that are super simple uh, that I want to share with the world. I'm still sharing with the world. That's my goal is to is just to help people step into their kind of divine mission, what they're meant to do. If there was no fear, if there was no procrastination, if there was no no limiting beliefs, who were they designed to be? Why are you, why are you here? What's your goal? What's your thing? How many lives can you impact? You know, what gifts do you have that God's given you that you're not using because um, there's emotion or, or, you know, sabotage in the way. I love this. So this is a common theme that I'm experiencing when I'm interviewing our course creators, our authors, people who are creating some sort of information that they're selling out there. The common theme is, is that they're taking something, they're taking their knowledge or expertise in something that they've had some sort of a win in, and it doesn't have to be big. Most people think, oh, my win has to be massive and huge. Otherwise people won't invest, but you've been able to take your expertise and knowledge from your profession, from your experience working with network marketers and coaching. Mm -hmm. And then you said, well, Hey, like, why don't I package this up, put a framework around it mm -hmm. and, and sell it to people to help them. And I like to reiterate with my audience all the time, because you have some of those people that are out there as like, well, if you really want to help people, why don't you just give out the information for free. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that when people pay, they pay attention. I give mm -hmm. away a lot of stuff for free, but I have the most impact in the things that people have to pay for. There's some psychology behind mm -hmm. investing and putting skin in the game. So I love the fact that you've done that because it's a common theme with all of my guests is just taking that 10% edge that you have frameworking it and then putting it together. Now in that though, in your creation of that, whether it be writing the book, doing the course, being a coach, was there any type of imposter syndrome or any <laughs> mindset blocks that held you back, but you did it anyways, obviously? Yeah. So not with the writing the book that 
really flowed. But when I did go to do the course, I really had a lot of um, uncertainty around it. And part of that was I had no mentor with it or like no framework, no like course that I took. Normally I would take a course, how to do a course. Right. And I just jumped in and, and like just did my best. Right. So I just jumped in, I recorded videos. I, and I'm good at framing things up. So I, and because I had the book to kind of base things off of, I felt that kind of, okay, well, I know what I'm going to talk about. I'll do this many videos. And I know that people will stay on a certain amount of time or whatever. So I just tried to stick to those things. But in hindsight, Tanya, I wish if I went back or if I were to do another or do it again, I would probably get a, just a little bit of mentorship uh, around uh, the experience. <laughs> Spoken like a true coach, right? You know, the value of coaching and mentorship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. so my, my audience knows this because we've been talking about it for a while. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this interview. I wanted to bring out a different perspective from somebody who has created a program as well and has had success with it. And the success, in my opinion, has been life-changing, not only life-changing to you, but the people that you coach and mentor. So a lot of people come up to me and say, Tanya, uh, when are you going to create a course to teach me how to create courses? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to create that because number one, it's a lot of work. It would probably put me, it would take me over a year to create that. But number two, uh, my virtual mentor, Amy Porterfield, has one of the best how to courses, how to build digital courses, not only just create the course, create the idea, validate it, price it, put it into the mechanics of technology, but then also how to market it and sell it on a daily basis. Um, she's, she opens the door to her digital course academy one time per year. And that time this year is coming up depending on when you're viewing or listening to this. And so I'll leave a link to digital course academy, which we partnered with Amy this year. And like Jenny said, uh, we wish we would have had mentors for this because it would have really fast tracked and it really would have been, um, you know, just an easier step-by-step -step process and framework for us uh, was something that I wish I would have had. I think I created my first digital course in 2014. We launched mm -hmm. it in 2014. I probably started yeah. it way before <laughs> and mm -hmm. like just took me forever because again, nobody was teaching this kind of stuff yeah. and my audience wants me to teach it. And I'm like, no, like it's, it's, it's not hard, but it's an, it's intense. It's life changing if you apply it. Um, so I'll leave links to, to Digital Course Academy. We've got a really great bonus that we're putting together where you can come and mastermind with us live in person as well, which is something that I haven't done for three years. So we have a big deal promotion around it. So go check it out in the show notes. So I'm curious, um, when you came up with the idea, so the framework was already in your book and you're like, all right, I'm just going to take what's in the book and framework it out and put it into a digital course. How has creating that digital course and making it available to your online family changed, number one, your life, mm -hmm. but then I want to dive into some of your success stories as well. So how has this changed your life and what impact has it had on your life being now a digital course creator? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, first of all, it's a residual income that is uh, just doing its own thing. Like it doesn't really require a lot from me once in a while, someone can't log in or something, but in general, it just is, um, it's like bonus money, <laughs> you know, this money coming in for something I did once. And I remember when I was first in network marketing, teaching people about residual income and how you do the thing once, and then it makes you money over and over again. And so I mean, uh, biggest impact has been uh, extra income, a product to sell when I speak on stage, uh, something uh, that it edifies, you know, um, kind of postures me as an expert in that arena, uh, brings me clients, you know, people will watch the course and or do the course and then reach out, hey, I just did your course, I just read your book, I'm, you know, interested in working one on one. Um, so I mean, from career perspective, it's been it's been really wonderful. Uh, to have and very simple, uh, super simple. Um, what was the second part of the question? I have lost my train of thought. So, I've been no, I love that. So, I, so residual income is like our favorite world in our family over here. Every time like we have an opportunity across our desk, I'm like, is it a residual opportunity? Like that is my question I ask all the time because I'm like, hey, if I'm going to do the course once, I want to get paid for it 
forever if I can, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. I love that word. It's one of our favorites over here. And the other question was, is how mm-hmm. did it impact your, like, do you have any cool success stories that you can share with some of your clients and the impact that you've been able to have through being a digital course creator? Sure. Uh, you know, my, one of my favorites was uh, this guy reached out to me. I was like, I just want you to know, you don't know who I am, but I read your book and my wife and I went through your course together and it's just really improved our marriage. But on top of that, we're now open to opportunities, earning income, and we're, we're showing up in ways, you know, that we weren't showing up before we both lost weight. Now we're doing the course with our son. Um, so I love that the course is really for all ages. I I'm, am like, I have a dream to do something for kids too, because it's all around emotions and how to handle your emotions and deal with old stuff. So, um, so that was really cool. Lots of uh, people do this with their kids too. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, you know, um, there's cool stories. Like um, I teach people how to kind of reset, a, you know, their mindset around money, for example. So they might have a limiting belief around money and, they release that limiting belief. And then all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, like a check comes in the mail for $6,000 or something random, right? So I have so many of those stories. Those are my, like my favorites, um, is, is the kind of like, you wouldn't believe it, or maybe you would, but like, there's money, you know, or I, or I got a new opportunity, you know, all of a sudden they're like open to opportunity. Um, the course is really all about like, how do you normally look at things and what are you not seeing? because of that, because of those, that normal filter that you're using, you know, what's in the way. So what opportunities are you missing because you're collecting proof that nothing good ever happens to you or, uh, or, you know, things like that. So yeah, we get lots of fun, fun stories with the course and the book, of course. Yeah. So it opens up a ton of additional opportunities. What about like podcasts? You you talk about speaking engagements mm-hmm. and things like that. What about, I mean, obviously you're here on this podcast as the mm-hmm. expert. What, as you're going through um, building the digital course, a lot of the audience is listening to this. They are thinking, you know, I, I get this a lot. Who would listen to me? What mm-hmm. would I actually have that people would want to spend money or even like how the heck will I market it and get it in front of the right people that would want to buy it. So these are like a lot of limiting beliefs that people have. We just need to get over that. And that's the point of these interviews for me is to showcase other people's stories and say like, hey, if this person can do it, so can you. And check out this story. And this story is super different. And so what I know that we're going to be talking a lot about, we, we always talk about like all the great, amazing, like colorful rainbows and butterflies wrapped around this, Mm -hmm. but let's just have real talk. What are the challenges in creating the course and supporting it? Have you noticed any, have you noticed any challenges, trials or tribulations that people should maybe be aware of and just make sure that this is right for them? Yeah. I mean, the only thing uh, for me that was a challenge that I needed support in uh, was when I had a whole bunch of people sign up at the same time, which of course is a good problem, but then it's all the emails about the passwords and I had no idea. And so just kind of like all fly by the seat of my pants kind of stuff. And then marketing. I mean, I would love, like, I know you just mentioned that when you were talking about Amy's uh, course and I just, um, I would have loved to have had that little bit of knowledge, right? On how do you, I know how to market. I know how to share things, but um, it would have been cool to have a little bit of a plan in place. So, I mean, those would be the things for sure. Like learning how to sell it, knowing what to price it, uh, you know, and, uh, and then that, that confidence, like you mentioned before the imposter piece, like, you know, uh, is anyone going to buy my course? Does anyone need to know this? But you know, there's so many people out there that need to grow and learn from whatever it is that you're, you've overcome usually. So, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but, uh, so obviously I've been creating digital courses since 2014. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, the first one that I created, I didn't have a guide, didn't have a mentor. There was nobody teaching this stuff. So I had to fumble through it all myself, finally launched it. And it flopped. Like I had spent a year building this thing way Mm -hmm. too long. 
And then I put it together and I'm like, yeah, the sales page is up, the buy button is ready. And I, you know, put it out there. I didn't have a big email list at the time. I had a few thousand people on my email list and maybe some people following on social media. And my mom was the only one really engaging at the time. <laughs> and so I put it out there and I thought like, oh my gosh, finally, everybody is going to buy this thing. And it was absolute crickets. And I finally learned how to market it. I actually hired a coach that gave me the best advice, which was you have to give them what they want and sell them what they need. That's mm -hmm. how I internalized it. And so what I was giving them was what they needed, but not what they wanted. So it was a product positioning and a product titling and, and catchphrase uh, thing that we changed. And then I ended up doing a launch and we had a very big successful launch. I think we did like $250,000 in 10 days. It was crazy. Oh. And we had all those same problems. So mm -hmm. we were using like super old technology back in the day um, that doesn't even exist anymore. I don't <laughs> think every single one of those purchasers was not able to log in. And mm -hmm. it was like me and a friend of mine Actually, no, at the time, I didn't even have a virtual assistant. It was just me, myself, and I. And I was late night, like, emailing people. I'm so sorry. I'll get this over. Like, it was all the things, right? And then I, you know, I, I evergreened the course and, you know, learned marketing and, and put it out there. But that was the biggest launch that we had ever done. And then in 2021, when Amy launched her Digital Course Academy, I actually bought it because we were creating a new course and I knew that Amy was an eight figure uh, digital course seller. And I was like, okay, success leaves clues. If I could learn like one thing from this program that helps us to have a more successful launch than what we're used to, I'm all years. So I went through the program as if I was brand new and had never created a course ever. Mm -hmm. And I learned all the crazy cool marketing stuff that she talks about. Like I even structured our sales webinar the same way that she structures hers. And we did a $785,000 launch in 10 days. It was a lot, wow. right? Um, <laughs> now, granted, our email list was bigger, you know, yeah. been on the scene for longer. Sure. But um, just the, the nuances that we were able to grab from mm -hmm. the program. I pretended like I was brand new and just humbled myself to the process. So all that like marketing, I'm even telling my course creators that, that want to scale their programs. I'm telling them like, make sure that you have digital course Academy because it can be like, those numbers are life-changing for people. Mm -hmm. Like it's mm -hmm. mind blowing, life-changing. I can't even believe that we did it. If I need to change my mindset, I believe that we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Your course is called uh, Self Sabotage No More. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I got that yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna also because the way that you were talking, I know that a lot of listeners are going to be like, "Ooh, I want to learn more about that too." Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna leave a link in the show notes of where you're watching or listening, and you can go and check out Jenny's program. She has the book. She has her course that you can also check out. And then she also has her coaching if you guys ever want any like one-on-one -on -one coaching so that um, I love that I can hear your dog because I love that it's your dog and not mine because my dog is always the one that interrupts the show and I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> this is real life, people. We're working home over here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have two puppies. So if you hear two dogs, that's what's going on there. <laughs> All good. We're total dog lovers over here. But yeah, I, I, I'm going to leave links so people can go and check out your stuff and see what you're doing as well. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about like if there is somebody that's out there that either is a coach or not a coach or just even if they don't even have an online business at all, but they just thought the idea sounds really cool. I like the idea of taking some sort of piece of knowledge and expertise and packaging it up in a way where I can impact people with this information. I can create a true, technically 100% profit style business for myself and create a residual income with being a course creator. Um, what kind of advice would you give them from one course creator to a, you know, an aspiring course creator? And then also thinking about the expertise that you have on mindset and, and psychology as well for people and, and helping people in that sense. 
I I think the first thing that came to mind when you were when you were asking me that question is keep it simple. You know, just keep it simple. Like, what do you and what do you love talking about? Uh, as if you're a coach wanting to create a course, what do, what's the thing you're always telling clients? What's the thing you get excited about sharing with clients? You know, um, before I found these tools with emotion, I used to share a lot about how affirmations changed my life, and uh, you know how I was such a um, you know I have a, a story of where I was and it was very much like rock bottom to where I am now. And affirmations were the thing that kind of helped me move towards uh, where I am now. And so like I would pick something simple that like that, that like everyone's aware of, but they don't know why it works. Explain the why, the how, the, and all of that. Like I would just choose something simple uh, that you get excited about and, uh, and share like how it's impacted your life and how it can impact others. I mean, I guess, uh, bottom line, keep it simple would be my, my biggest advice. So what I hear from you when you say that is based on your knowledge and expertise, you probably have 2,500 different digital courses inside of you that you could create. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because I was just realizing that as you were talking. <laughs> I was like, oh, I could do one on this. I could do one on that. Yeah. And I love that yeah. you said that because Amy, um, I interviewed Amy the other week. I think it was last week I interviewed Amy and we talked about this and she talked about your 10% edge. And she also said exactly the same thing. She's like, your program, your course, your program, whatever you create, it doesn't have to be a signature program where you have to put, you know, everything in the kitchen sink into it. You can take one piece of just like what you said, like you could have an entire program on affirmations, right? How to do them, how to structure them so that you can attract that all into your world. And I can see Jenny writing down that note right now. That's her <laughs> next course. <laughs> Stay tuned. 100%. 100%. And I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Stay tuned for Jenny's next course, you know? And that's a thing. Like, you can extract one small thing from all of that knowledge that you have, and you can create that mini course. We've done that a few, a few times. We have some signature courses that are really big, and they took a lot out of me to put together. But we also created a digital course in two days. That was a mini course that we put a $47 price tag on. It sells mm -hmm. every other day. That's life-changing money. That can change somebody's world, right? Over the course of a year or two years as that, you know, grows upon each other. So we talked about that. There was a gal that uh, took her caramel candy apple recipe, packaged it up and sold it. Her first launch made $60,000 on a yeah. caramel apple recipe. and over. <laughs> Amy showed me her numbers or shared with me her numbers over the, the time that since she's created it has now created over $300,000 in revenue, sharing with people her famous candy apple, caramel uh, apple recipe. Absolutely Amazing. insane. So everybody mm -hmm. has this like magic inside of them that they can extract and you just have to know like the formula or teach it in a way that somebody can step by step get a certain result and it doesn't have to be like a huge result it could be some sort of just small result that you know that that group of, of people want and that's exactly jenny what you've done you've taken your you know you are smart because you took your book and you're like how do i make this more actionable for people mm -hmm. and you put a course together and people pay i don't know 20 bucks for a book and then they pay you know 400 500 sometimes more for a course and you're giving them an actionable framework and they're able to go out there and actually like and do it and have a bigger impact on themselves. But then you also make bigger income, which is, I love it. Like this world is amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's so beautiful. And I just keep realizing there's so many things that we can do to make that impact and be abundant at the same time. And there definitely was a time where I felt like I was supposed to not worry the, about the money or want the money and just help people. And I always felt uncomfortable. And now I just, I realize what you said at the beginning is so true is that when people, um, you know, pay a bit of money for something, they're going to stay focused and connected and they're going to learn and hopefully heal and hopefully grow and hopefully impact more people um, because of that investment. And so, yeah, it's just super cool to be kind of in alignment with uh 
with helping people and also being financially abundant. I love that. And sometimes it, it it's scary. Like it, it was absolutely scary for me to step out there and put my knowledge out there and to be confident and courageous enough to do that. But big results don't come without big courage and big action, right? So you have to take that leap if you want those big results. They just don't come out of nowhere. Yeah. And being courageous to take that, you know, put more faith into yourself and take that leap, you can really, really create some life-changing results with that. But it is scary. It is really scary. You're going to have imposter syndrome creep up on you. I still do to this very day. <laughs> And sometimes I was even, and I don't know, Jenny, if you felt this too, when it's out there and you're just starting to build your client base, you're nervous. You're like, oh my gosh, like, what are people going to think? But I think that the biggest way to overcome that is just to get it out there. And once you start getting your testimonials and people start sharing their experience and success stories with you, all of that melts away. Because you start to get a little bit more swagger, swagger, is that how you say it? Swagger, <laughs> you know, walk with a little bit more of a pep in your step when you get those testimonials and you're like, it starts to build on, you're like, oh, maybe this really is working for people. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. And yeah. that starts to get you more confident in getting out there with your information more. But that doesn't come without you just making the decision and drawing the line in the sand and saying, I am going to give this my best shot. That doesn't come without that. So you have to do step one before you can get to step two. So, so I just want to say, so Jenny, thank you for being courageous and putting yourself out there because I'm sure you're making this huge impact with all of your people and all of your online family and you're leveraging your time. If you didn't create your digital course and you just had the book, um, maybe some people don't want to read in this digital age anymore, right? Or whatever, right? Maybe they want more actionable steps. But if you didn't um, create those steps in a leverage more virtual way, you can only help so many people one on one with your time before you literally burn yourself out and you have no life and then you aren't able to show up for your people. So having that digital course way of, of putting people through the same information and helping them, you can help way more than just, you know, one on one, which is such a beautiful thing. And more people now have the ex have the uh, have the uh, experience uh, of 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 going through your program and not having to like wait for you one-on-one -on -one or getting on a waiting list or something mm -hmm. like that. What was your biggest last question? What was your biggest aha moment when you launched the program, you put it out there and you were like, oh, you were like crossing your fingers. Like, I hope this is going to work. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess it was the same thing as the book. It was the same thing where I just poured my heart into creating. And I actually didn't think so much about what was going to happen once I launched it. Then when I launched it, I had major fear like, oh no, <laughs> what if nobody likes it? Or what if it's terrible? Or what if, you know, there's just all the things that happen when, you know, on launch day, I didn't have those thoughts prior to launching it. Uh, and then starting to get the feedback, like, Hey, this was transformational. I was able to speak on my company stage because I, you know, watched your, did your course or, you know, did those actions you showed me how to do or, or whatever it was. And, and, uh, realizing like, oh, this is just another way that I can reach people. So I guess, um, to answer your question, courses just allow us to have a bigger impact, uh, without, um, with, with really valuing our time, you know, with that, with that time freedom piece. So, yeah, I never, I never really thought about it that way. I was just creating a course to create a product product and like, kind of, you know, okay, like this is on my mind. I got to do it. It's on my heart. And then now once it, once I put it out there realizing, wow, like this is such a cool way to be able to reach more people and impact more people. I love it. And so we will leave uh, your course details and contact details in the show notes for people that want to connect more, learn about more what you do, uh, check out your courses, check out the programs that you have. Thank you for putting those together. I know it takes a little bit of effort or a lot of effort on the front end, but then the back end, I mean, it's front loaded work, right? Mm -hmm. You do the work once and yeah. now you have something you can offer and sell and, and help your audience with forever. So 
thanks thanks for being courageous enough to putting that to, for putting that together. We appreciate that. So we'll link to it in the show notes. Any last words that you would like to share with the audience before we wrap? Oh, I just, I appreciate you so much for having me on here, Tanya. And if there's anyone listening who's been wondering, uh, you know, just go for it. Just do it. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's such a cool thing to step out of your comfort zone and uh, and grow and, and see what's possible. So I just appreciate you, Tanya, for helping so many people uh, step out of that comfort zone and into their dream lives. It's so cool, everything you're doing. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. And to just piggyback that, we'll leave the uh, links to Digital Course Academy. Depending on when you're listening or viewing in, it may or may not be open for enrollment. But this year is September 20th to September 28th. There is a short window of opportunity to enroll in Digital Course Academy, which is hands down, I think, the best course that's going to teach you from point A to point Z how to create your digital course, how to sell it, how to get it out there how to put all the tech together, which is really easy if you have the steps. <laughs> when you don't have the steps, it's, it's hard. But when you have the steps like Amy lays out, it's really, really easy and doable. So I'm excited to be able to partner with her and have her say that we can share it with our audience because it is life-changing if somebody puts it into action. So thank you, Jenny, for coming out on the show, sharing your digital course experience. Again, you guys listening and viewing in, please reach out to Jenny and thank her for her time and let her know what you loved most about the show today that she came out on. And definitely check out her courses, her book. Uh, I shared on my Instagram the other day, I had a, a self-sabotage. I have a self I think everybody does. We, we struggle with self-sabotage in some way, shape or form. It's just we have to be humble enough to admit that. Yeah. And then we can do something about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you saw, but I got hypnotized last week to try to relieve some of my self-sabotage that was going on in my world. And all this cool stuff came up. So it is an important part of personal development to always be working on your inner shit, I mm -hmm. like to say. Totally. hundred so, percent. Yeah. So if you're not, you know, because all the other like when, with, when I'm talking to my entrepreneurs and business owners, all of the tech stuff, all of the how to's, all that, like that's what people want. And we give that, but none of that is going to fall into place or work if you don't have the other stuff taken care of, which is inside is your personal development, is your mindset, is the way that you talk to yourself every single day, the way that you talk to others. So that is ultimately the most important. And then all of the other stuff is like the the 20%. The rest is the 80%. So you're helping people focus on the 80%, which I love. Thank mm -hmm. you, Jenny, so much. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for coming out on the show. And I will uh, talk to you soon, hopefully. And thanks for doing what you do. We appreciate you so much. Mm -hmm.